The Lord be with you. It's been a busy past few days. Uh, please note in our worship service, we will, um, we're changing to setting eight. But this week, it's only the first part of the service that's changing. So we will have a different Kyrie and a different um, gospel acclamation verse. The, the rest of the service will be as it has been the past few months. Our theme always on the first Sunday of Lent is the temptation of Jesus. And in Mark, it takes three verses. So we'll uh, see what that means for us. Let us uh, prepare our hearts for worship. Oh, you'll hear the name Lucy Knox. Uh, that's the aunt of Becky Eason. And, uh, and she died. She was very close to Becky. So um, you'll hear that name. Let's prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness found on the third page of her bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who brings us out of captivity into freedom, out of the wilderness into the promised land, out of death into life. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Forgive us and give us strength to turn from sin and to serve you in newness of life. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives us a new birth, and through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives us all our sins. Almighty God, strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop of our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
first reading comes from Genesis chapter 9. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I established my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I will make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from 1 Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteousness for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel <clears throat> according to St. Mark, the first chapter. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son who went to the wilderness. Help, <clears throat> help us to realize that you are in the wilderness places in our lives. In Jesus', <coughs> in Jesus name we pray, amen. We begin with a... Um, story. It's supposed to be a funny story. It's about uh, a local sheriff who is looking for a deputy. And as these things go, he interviews people and he has a, a bunch of candidates. He doesn't appear to be too enamored with any of them, but the first one comes in and he says, okay, tell me what one and one is. And this candidate listens for, or, and, and thinks and thinks and finally says, one and one, well, that's 11. And the sheriff is thinking, well, that's not exactly what I expected, but let's go on. What two days in the week begin with T? Again, he thinks and thinks and thinks, and all of a sudden the light bulb goes off and he goes, I know today and tomorrow. And again, the sheriff realizes that uh, that's not the answer he wanted, but he goes on. So finally he says, who killed Abraham Lincoln? And the candidate thinks and thinks and thinks. Finally says, well, you've stumped me on that one. I do not know. And the sheriff says, well, why don't you go and think about that for a while? So he leaves, and as he's going out, all the other candidates, his friends are, are there, and they said, how did it go? He said, it went great. I got the job. And they go, oh, really? He says, yes, just think. My first day on the job, and I'm already on a murder case. <laughs> Today is Jesus' first day on the job, according to the Gospel of Mark. Excuse me, according to all the Gospels, Jesus is baptized, and it's only after his baptism that he begins his ministry. And what's the first thing that happens? Mark says, he was driven by the Spirit into the wilderness. There he was with the wild beasts and the angels ministered to him. And it, makes us, it brings us a Lenten theme for us because uh, Jesus was out in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights praying and fasting. That's why we have Lent, 40 days nights of fasting. Uh, we have five Sundays in there, so it's really 45 days. We don't consider Sundays as part of Lent, because on Sunday we still celebrate. <coughs> excuse me, we still celebrate the resurrection. The question, the Lenten question. 
when we're in our wilderness? How does God meet us? Is, is God there? Another way of putting it, do you have a religion of glory or a religion of the cross? The religion of glory is one that says, because I believe God will make sure I'm wealthy, I'm successful, my kids are above average, everything. I'm going to, be, I'm going to have good health. There was a um, church in uh, Dallas, Texas, the Church of the Rock, big billboards, had the pastor standing in front of his Mercedes-Benz, I believe. Every finger of his hand had a big ring on it. And the motto, slogan on the billboard was, for success, our success begins at the Church of the Rock. That's a theology of glory. And many Christians have bought, in, bought into the theology of glory or a religion of glory. I want God. The reason I'm a believer is God will bless my life and make me a success. The only problem is very often, it's in the, their successes that people run into the most trouble. Isn't that true? Look at our football players. One convicted of abusing his son. Another convicted of um, spousal abuse, terrible spousal abuse. And a whole host of them involved in murders and drugs and everything else. Uh, movie stars found dead because of an overdose. We could go on. Those are the big headlines. But it's often in our successes that we think, oh, this is a blessing of God. All good things do come from God. But it's often the place where we can get into the most trouble. Until we go through a wilderness. The whole point is in the wilderness area. In the wilderness, God is able to reach us and be more present with us in those wilderness areas. It's interesting that as people age, they say their perspective on life changes. It changes from one of uh, rather than doing, of simply being. The surgeon Atul Rwandi looked at uh, how we Americans look at death, and he felt that in the hospitals we look at death through medically, and we should be looking at death with a broader perspective. And he said, it's often with our elderly people that their perspective changes, and we should help them as they go through, he doesn't call it a, a desert or a wilderness of growing old and aging, but he felt that's exactly what we should be doing. We should be helping them shift to their priorities and priorities that we generally as a society um, put a, a, in a higher category than others. Being rather than doing. Giving rather than getting. Friendships rather than accomplishments. Family rather than work and so on and so on. It's a healthier way to live. Why? They've had the great opportunity of going through a wilderness, what we call aging. It's too bad we have to wait that long. Laura uh, Karstensen, who is a psychiatrist 
psychologist that had studied this, and the reason she studied it is when she was uh, 20, she had an extended stay in a hospital. And at that point, her perspective changed. So she went into uh, studying aging. And um, what she does is she, uh, she has done a number of studies that have supported that conclusion that a he healthy sense and having a healthy sense of who we are going through a wilderness, even having a healthy sense of mor mortality that we are going to die provides one with a more positive outlook on life. So Jesus went to the wilderness and in that wilderness we understand he was tempted. Temptations, Martin Luther sa says, the big problem with temptations is not that we have these temptations to sin. And in the large catechism he lists the sins and he talks about how younger people more concerned with the sins of the flesh when, uh, and, and as people age, they get more concerned with material sins. But he says the real problem, of course, he identifies sin, death, and the power of the devil as the three enemies of the Christian. And what is temptation doing to us? He said, it's trying to drive us from God. Here's what he write, writes. Others who are concerned with spiritual matters are tempted by the devil. The demonic effort to get us to scorn and despise both the word and the works of God to tear us away from faith, hope, and love. To draw us into unbelief, false security, and stubbornness or to drive us into despair, atheism, blasphemy, and countless other abominable sins. What's happening? We're tempted. What's the great temptation? To draw us away from God and unbelief. Jesus went into the wilderness It's the wilderness where we re <coughs> excuse me, realize where God is involved in our lives. It's not necessarily our successes. It's in those wilderness areas when we're tempted. Let me end with this example. Tony Campalo tells the story of um, a man in a, a church he was serving and the man had become extremely bitter. His wife said he hated God. And the reason he hated God was that he was dying and his regret was that he wouldn't see his grandchildren grow up and graduate from high school extremely bitter. His wife said he would wake up in the middle of the night shouting, I hate you, God. I hate you, God. I hate you, God. And then Tony Campalo said his church was going to have a healing service. And this woman called him up and said, can I bring my husband? And he's thinking, I don't know. But of course he said, yes, bring him. They came, kneeled at the altar rail, received the sign of the cross, the anointing of the oil, and a prayer for healing. He left. Three weeks later, he died. When he died, his wife called up Tony Campalo and said, I've just had the greatest three weeks of our entire 50 years of marriage, I've just had the greatest three weeks with my husband. He was, he, he was healed at that healing service. 
We have gone home. And he was the kindest man. Took so much attention. Paid so much attention to his family and his grandchildren and everyone that came around. It was beautiful. He had gone to the wilderness. God had met him. He was healed. Jesus went through the wilderness, had his time with the Almighty, came out triumphant. Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Led by Christ in our journey of repentance and moved by his compassion, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Holy God, in baptism you wash us clean from sin and refresh us with your promise of of belonging. Unite your church in proclaiming that in your family all are welcome, all are beloved, all are made whole. Lord, in your mercy, the earth for your life-giving water. We pray for desert places where there is no rain and for restoration of polluted rivers and oceans. Lord, in your mercy. Flood our world with a desire for peace. Where people are oppressed, bring justice. Where there is terror, bring safety. Stir up compassion among leaders and citizens so that every person is treated with dignity, kindness, and love. Lord, in your mercy. Your heart aches with those who are in pain. Send your healing presence to Mike Shanks, Pamela Sinquini, Kelly Cowell, Gary Coffey, Mickey Fuller, the family of Cal Fuller, Tiffany Giles, Dustin Jones, Jim Lampy, Pat Morrison, Aza Moss, Officer Pearson, Jan Snaff, Louise Snyder, Wayne Sproul, Mary Thomas, Cynthia Tulin, Janice Trotter, Joe West, Ed Wood. Are there any others? We come to you in grateful thanksgiving for all the blessings of this day. We are especially thankful for a good youth event at Planet, Planet Wisdom. We are thankful for Hannah and her ministry among us. We send her with the prayer that her ministry blossoms among the people of Atonement Lutheran. Remember your covenant with us and keep us faithful to you until we join with all the saints and angels around your heavenly throne. Comfort those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Lucy Knox, of Jean Richards, and of Wiley Dinas. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not set us. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who bids us turn to you and prepare for the Paschal Feast. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, our living water and our merciful guide. Together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my, in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life and death re and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world, even as we sing. Amen, come Holy Spirit, Amen, come Holy Spirit. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, in, in, through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen, come, Lord Jesus. Amen, come, Lord Jesus. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. All are welcome. Please come. You may be seated.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all that, we may, have, we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. I'm going to invite everyone to be seated for a moment. Uh, read your messenger, a couple of things that are happening. One is Wednesday, uh, midweek Lenten worship services, noon and seven o'clock. Uh, the books for the Lenten study are in the back. If you haven't picked yours up, um, do so. And then um, the, the class that's going to go over that book will meet in the library area. Drew wants to make an announcement. Are you going to actually make it, Drew, or are we going to have Hannah do it? Drew would like you to know that there is plenty of food left out there for the bake sale that he's having for Officer Pearson. Um, this was all Drew's idea, which I think is pretty amazing. And um, up to $500 raised today will be matched by Thrivent. So I think that's pretty wonderful. Um, and it's all a free will donation out there. And so come and say hi to Drew and check it out. and. All right. Um, and there are also, Tom and Linda McConnell made um, doll bunk beds, and they have some of those available um, for a suggested donation, which is listed out there as well. So let's give Drew a round of applause. Drew had a lot of help from the Sunday school and others. Mm -hmm. Very good. Hannah, you may as well stay here for a farewell and Godspeed. Um, there are, is coffee and cake in Hannah's honor in the fellowship hall. Uh, this is Hannah's last Sunday with us. I... Um, I t told the folks last night that um, shortly after Atonement Lutheran Church called Hannah, I think it was two days later, a friend of mine, someone, a lay person at Atonement, uh, sent me an email kind of uh, gloating over the fact that they stole a... Um, an employee from us. And I told him it isn't a good characteristic. Gloating is not a good characteristic. <laughs> but I also said we, we'll be sending Hannah with a prayer that her ministry 
and that of atonement would blossom together. So that uh, is indeed our prayer that we are sending Hannah with. Hannah, I'm going to ask you to kneel. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus received you and made you a member of his church. When you came in this congregation, we rejoiced to receive you, both as a worker with us in ministry and in fellowship in the gospel. In this community of faith, you have heard the proclamation of God's word, which reveals his loving purpose for creation. And now, we send you away. We pray that your ministry will blossom, will thrive among the people of Advent Lutheran Church. And we encourage you to continue to be a worker with us in God's kingdom. Amen. I don't know if you would like to say anything, you may. It didn't work out very well last night. (laughs) Um, I just wanted to um, say thank you to each and every one of you for being so welcoming and so nurturing. Um, And it it is very hard to say goodbye, and I will miss all of you. Um, But I, when God tells you to do something, you do it. (laughs) I've spent a lot of time in my life trying to say no and that doesn't ever work out so um but thank you and and i hope i get a chance to to speak with all of you and um blessings on all of you and during this time of transition and and in your ministry and messiah's ministry It was fitting that she would have her last weekend, also have a trip with the youth where we all went to, um, where did we go? You can see I'm off my game today, more than usual. We went to Tulsa, yes, and got back yesterday afternoon, had worship here, and then I think we all had other activities that we were involved in last night. So that was fitting. Uh, Let me tell you what to expect to find. Of course, there is a basket for a card shower. There will be a picture that we're going to give to Hannah, and there's space in the matting around the picture for you to sign or uh, give a a good will wish. And in the fellowship hall, coffee, cake, I don't know what else is there. There are very delicious things at this table in the back with Drew. Some pretty outstandingly delicious things back there. So. Oh, there is. Thank you, Drew. That's a, a good a card point. For Officer There's Pearson. a card for Officer Pearson right on the other side of these doors right here on a table. Make sure you sign that as well. Very good. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about, now and forever. Amen.
Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship. Make disciples. Hunger for ministry. Nurture youth. Gather for ministries. Offer healing care to all the needs. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not sure how. 